Okay, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time zone or time frame or time that you're watching this video. In our last video of the home buying process, which was the home buying process part one, we discussed two different steps. Step one was to meet with or for you to meet with a real estate agent or a uh, real estate professional. Uh, simply put, this is uh, somebody that's going to help you find a house that's licensed. So if you want to know more about that, you go back and take a look at that video. And then in step two was get an understanding of your buying power. Get an understanding of your buying power, which is to simply uh, get pre-approved. You don't want to shop for uh, something that you can't afford. So you need to know what you're buying power is. Okay, now here in part two of the home buying process, I'm going to uh, talk about steps three and four. Steps three and four, which are, or they are, search for homes, and then after you find a home that you like, you make an offer. Okay, step three, which is searching for homes. This can be the fun part. And when I bought my second home, this was the fun part. When I bought my first home, I didn't, I didn't have an agent. I just kind of winged it and probably did things that I wasn't supposed to do or could have done better. But anyway, when I bought my second home, this was the fun part. And I had a relationship with the agent, which of course was before I actually became a real estate agent. So uh, going out looking for homes or going out looking at different homes and exploring different neighborhoods was, was kind of fun. What also made it fun was the fact that I had a relationship with the, with the agent that I had at that time. Uh, they were actually members of my church. And during that time, we had an opportunity to, to talk and get to know one another uh, better. So that was, a, that was a fun part. And then they showed me different houses in different neighborhoods that were close to the neighborhood that I was already living in that I had no clue about. And currently I live about six miles away from the home that I was in previously. It didn't even know, I didn't even know this neighborhood even existed, but they found the house, found the neighborhood, and I actually fell in love with the neighborhood before I actually fell in love with the house. Okay, so let's get into it. Your agent will find and schedule houses for you to go look at. And so your agent will have access to what is called a lockbox. Uh, so that lockbox has a key in it, but in order to get to the key, you need to have access to the code that's on the lockbox. So I'm not gonna give you all that information, but anyway, having an agent that has access to a lockbox that can get you into the house to go look at it is something that you'll need. I can't imagine trying to do this process or go through that uh, part of looking at homes on my own. I don't even know how it's done on your own. Uh, maybe the sales agent would have to open up the door for you. So anyway, your agent is going to help you find the best home given the requirements that you provided to your agent. Those requirements are things like uh, price, your max price, your min minimum price, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, etc., etc. So they're going to help you find the best home for the requirements that you gave them. And in addition, as you're looking at homes or going out to look for homes, you're gonna give them more information. Uh, can't actually think of an example right now, but you're gonna give them more information and it's gonna clarify the requirements that you initially gave your agent. And then in addition, the agent is gonna have access to to different tools that will allow uh, you to receive uh, maybe homes or listings of homes via email. And that could be some sort of advanced search. Now, all, now not all real estate uh, websites that you go to are created the same. Uh, nothing against Zillow, but um, you have to be careful of accurate information. So your real estate professional has tools and systems to ensure that, that you see every home available given the criteria that you gave your real estate agent. Okay, so 
That was step three. Step four, you've seen some houses. Now it's time to actually, uh, so you've seen some houses and now it's time to actually make an offer on a house that you said, hey, this this is the home that I that I want. So making an offer, that's step four, making an offer. So your agent will prepare uh, an offer based on the price uh, and terms that you choose. So the home is listed for 200. You might say, well, I wanna pay 190 and me paying that 190 is contingent on the home appraising at a certain value and it passing a home inspection. Might not be the case in this market, but typically that's what could happen. So again, uh, for those of you that don't think you need a real estate agent, you can do this on your own, but I think it would be a little bit tricky to do this process on your own. So uh, I recommend that you get a real estate agent, or at least if you want to do it on your own, I recommend go to real estate school. Take about three months and really understand the process because uh, you're spending a lot of money and I wouldn't uh, risk overpaying too much on a home that uh, you could have gotten a sale on. I'll just keep it at that. Okay, and like I was saying, uh, for those of you that don't need a real, that feel like you don't need an agent to buy a home, well, one of the things that you have to be careful of, and I didn't know this before I got my license, is the fact that when you aren't represented by a buyer's agent, you are really being represented by the seller's agent or the real estate agent that represents the person that's selling the home. And that real estate agent owes loyalty to the seller. It doesn't, that agent doesn't owe loyalty to the buyer. So that agent is being paid by the seller. So of course that makes sense. They're gonna look out for the seller. And you as the buyer, simply put, if I was the uh, if I was the seller's agent, I would try to get the most I could for the home that I was trying to sell for a seller. That's just how the process works. Okay, let's continue. So when you're not represented by a uh, an agent as a buyer, what you're really allowing yourself to do or to be is to be represented by the seller's agent. And I reiterate that seller ag seller's agent represents the seller and owes loyalty and all the other characteristics that go along with uh, being a real estate agent. That seller's agent owes loyalty to the seller. Okay, so if you like this video, you can like, you can like it uh, by hitting the thumbs up button or, uh, and you can subscribe to this channel. I'll try to provide content as often as I can, at least uh, once a week, given my schedule. All right. Thank you.